I promise I'll bring it in next week. That's our little award that we got for this show. For the Antennas Award. This show won an ant... Never mind. We're bragging. First show, what's Mark doing with my phone? Hello, oh, mate. Uh, nothing, he says. Schools don't teach how to become a good parent, how to make money, how to succeed in life. How to... This person's asking what the hell do schools do because kids aren't allowed to hug at school anymore. Second letter, thank you, sir. Very nice. Second letter tonight, men cheat on their women because, get this, evolution has programmed it into them and it's written by a woman. Thank you, love. You're giving us licence to do a hell of a lot. And the last letter tonight, thank you, sir. Uh, my son has been verbally abused by his phys ed teacher. He's been accused of being a, four, a poor physical specimen, a waste of all his teaching time, a pathetic human being and someone who he could never stand. How does my son get over this? He's only 17. Ooh, all this and more terrific panel coming up. Mark won't be here, um, but hopefully I'll have a coffee by that stage too. Don't go away. 20 seconds. Here we go. Water? Where's my coffee? I want a coffee. No, no. <laughs> we get water. Got a problem, big or small, would a miracle be nice? Our monthly crew is back, churning out advice. You might even laugh a bit in the following half hour. Park your backside on the couch, cause baby it's time for Sweet and Sour. Right here on Sweet and Sour. <laughs> I'll do just that. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Sweet and Sound. Lovely to have your company. Gary Mitchell with you for the next half hour. I'm really happy tonight. We've got a great lot of panellists in. They're all my favourites. First up, Prince of Flesh. Hello, mate. How are you? I'm super. Oh, you're always super. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, yeah, you've been cooking for any of the Cardinals or uh, anybody no, actually, of note lately? No, great function a few days ago. Go on. 30th anniversary Cape Mantel Winery in Margaret River. 140 guests. Stunning day. Absolutely. I didn't even take my best and they reckon it was the best they've ever uh, had. Was it a sh slow roasted shoulder? No, it was everything. <laughs> it was from everything. From start to finish. You've lost a lot of weight, I can tell. Oh, mate. just a few kilos to keep the doctors happy. But you're not, you've still got the sugar happening, haven't you? Oh, you've got to have a little bit of sugar. You've got to have a little bit of the things you're not allowed to have. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, I'll believe you. Is that true? My hello, love. Welcome to the show. Sup. When was the last time you were here? Oh, when I hosted. What did you say? Sup. 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 What does that mean? What's up? What's up? It's what people, it's what teenagers Your generation. do. People Sup. Say. Not me. Sup. I, Is I that just, American speak look, for something? Sure Sup. What's up? I just said that because, you know, you get nervous. So you say weird things. Sup. Sup. Okay, if you weren't nervous, what would you say? What's up? <laughs> Welcome to the show again, love. Um, my hosted, some people might remember, uh, a segment. How long ago? Uh, months. Months. A few months ago. Just forget about it. Just forget about it. <laughs> All right, we've given you a reprieve. You're back. Welcome. Susie, it's been forever. Oh, no, not that long, but okay. it has been a while. I thought you'd forgotten about it. Okay, me. what happened to Rottnest? It hasn't sunk. No, it's not. It's fantastic. They won a number of awards last on Saturday night. At How the many tourism. people were in the competition? How many I'm categories? Not sure. I, I just know they won some awards. Congratulations. So fantastic. That's nice. No, they did. They well did very well. How many, uh, how many people actually sit on the Rottnest Island board? Uh, there is, uh, oh God, that's asking me, five, five, six of us. Wow. Six, I think. And do you, do you, <laughs> each, have, them. you each have allocated shallows? Where it's a, <laughs> and we have, no, it's oh, very nice above board. Uh, no, it's very no? above board. When was the last time you holidayed there? I uh, was there, I went with the police out with the juvies. Oh, to what a segue that is. With the police. Yes, I was out with the police uh, last year with the, going out in the van with the police, much to my teenagers' disgust and horror when I drove in the middle with the police and got ooh. out and they were there with a group of kids. So. Ex-policemen? Yes. Still, still yachting around though, aren't you? Still yachting around. Still yachting around. Still Former yachting. politician, soon to be politician again. <laughs> oh. Thanks, Gazza. Welcome back, Bobby. And oh, it's, it's been it's, forever it's, for you too. It's great to, be, to be back. It's great to be back. Mate. I, since I saw you last, I went sailing around Indonesia. Spent oh. a couple of months up there, been to Rottnest. In fact, you know, I was the policeman at Rottnest in 19... Blah, 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 blah. Long time ago. Married before, or not married? Before, married. 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 Sue married. came with you while Sue you were came, over there? Sue came over, and in those days, you didn't have a permanent police sta uh, station there. You went over at Christmas time or a couple of weeks before Christmas and stayed through to a couple of weeks after Easter, and then you went back for the long weekends. That must have been a tough gig, mate. It was. Well, actually, it was because you worked 24 hours a day. They never let you up. And How many own, other cops on with you? Me. That was it? Me, that was me. 
The police do. There's, there's not many on now. No. Wow. They work very, very hard. Yeah. It was a and great it's not, spot. Yeah. I loved it. Well, I loved, Rottnest is my second home. I love Rottnest. I was the minister for Rottnest for two and a half years. Is that right? Yeah, which was fantastic. Mm, it reminds me of a little Greek island from where my parents are. Oh. Oh. No, no, not so many tavernas. <laughs> not so many tavernas. But it is great to be terrific. back. Thanks, We've got to do some work. Be. Okay, enough <laughs> holiday talk. Here we go. Dear panel, what a draconian society we've become when hugging among kids at school is banned by the school administrations. What are the schools really for if they're going to prevent the most fundamental of human needs? That is, sharing the emotional support and warmth of other humans. Schools don't teach how to be a good parent, how to make money, how to succeed in life, how to value the planet, how to value each other, how to live with each other. They merely teach low-level information, reading, writing and arithmetic, if you think that's low-level information, and some basic other bits that may become relevant in the choice of job that our kids eventually may take. There is no humanity in our schools and this stupid and pathetic action to ban hugging and uh, discipline kids who have been caught hugging is proof that our education system has created the current generation of emotionally deficient minors. Unfortunately, they will become adults with the same deficiencies. Why isn't there a bigger noise to correct this callous, draconian action Wendy of Guildford in WA. Bobby, um, <laughs> Wendy's being a little bit overdramatic, isn't she? Very overdramatic. Uh, I think it's a lot of rubbish, actually, this letter. I, I must admit, I, I saw the article about not being allowed to hug the other day. And, uh, um, well, I mean, it didn't... I, I went to an all-boys school, so the only hugging we did was when we played rugby. Oh, but, that's uh, what you tell us. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I thought it was a stupid, uh, uh, a stupid move on the part of the school, quite frankly. And, you know... Um, but all the rest of the stuff that Wendy says here, the schools are there to, pre to prepare you for the University of Life. And your parents are there to teach the kinds of things she's talking about, quite frankly. I, schools are not designed to teach uh, all the kinds of things that Wendy's talking about. Um, but I couldn't believe it when they... Uh, it's a bit like, you know, not allowing kids to uh, celebrate Father Christmas or to sing carols and all that sort of stuff. I think schools got a little bit too politically correct nowadays. Did, did you see the article? Was there a reason why the school... Uh, well, they said because the kids were hugging too tightly yeah, and they were worried about, uh, about injuries, uh, Gary. Was that it? Yeah, that's all. Well, that's I... all. It was, it was a, it's a beat-up, really. It's a, it's a stupid thing for the school to do, quite frankly. We, um, I, look, I, I just think, I agree, um, that this, this letter is just ridiculous quite frankly, because it's just full of bullshit. But just actually going <laughs> Thanks directly... For in, Wendy. Going directly <laughs> onto what we're talking about then with the hugging. I actually went on the internet mm. and found that this is very prevalent in the States. And there's what? about 10 no schools... Hugging that have banned it. So one, one principal, and I just have to read this, Their said reasons. it's a time, place and manner thing. We don't want students spending too much social time between class. And another boy had an time epileptic management. fit in, I don't know where it, wherever it was in the States, had an ep epileptic fit. Because? And the teacher, oh, just because he had epilepsy, and the kids were all worried about him as he was taken out, and they all hugged. And after that, the teacher came back and said, there is no hugging in this school, it's dangerous, because they have a liability they're worried about being sued. And then it's also happening in the eastern states. So we've just had a school here in Western Australia. But it's interesting, these in North Carolina in the school, these eighth graders who are about 13 year olds, they decided this is ridiculous. As a boy eighth set graders. This, eighth graders. So they're you yeah, know, they 13. They organised a hug in protest. Excellent. And they and they put it on Facebook page. We have a group hug. Okay. We can, I don't know whether we've reached. Oh, <laughs> um, okay. Uh, Facebook we'll and, and, and support of, of hugs. And they all they they posted on Facebook. It's very interesting if you go onto uh, mm. onto the internet, you can see. And they said hugs for fr free hugs here. And so everyone was hugging. And the principal came out and said, "That's it. You will all get detentions if you don't stop hugging." It was ridiculous. But, but I just have to say, with regard to the other things that she says the schools don't teach, I have four te te children at school and two stepchildren, and I have to say none of those things are correct. They do teach them how to be fantastic human beings, how to be care of the planet. They all have to do community service. They, do. they actually teach them a whole lot more about life than we ever learned, and it's not their generation that's emotionally deficient, it's our generation that have actually set this up. Is your generation emotionally deficient? I don't think so. I'm pretty normal. Well, I've heard some <laughs> of the kids whisper behind you, but never, no, no, I haven't. No, I haven't. Why would you ban hugging? They shouldn't. They shouldn't. It's Any just... justification? Ever justification? I heard one thing during the week. Some kids 
uh, sorry, some, kids, some people actually said, uh, it doesn't matter what the issue is, the, the administration set it up and we can't go undermining the administration's rules and that teaches them, if we do, to literally uh, abuse authority. Justification? Yes, right. It's crap, isn't it? That's bullshit. It's crap. Well, I think hugging's normal. You gotta hug people to welcome them and make them feel comfortable. All right, we'll keep Vincenzo a hug and then he can have the rap on this one. <laughs> Last word to Vincenzo. Oh. That was his oh, word. Is it? That was his word. Sorry, I take my hugging seriously. <laughs> as, an, as an Italian, I don't know how I'd live without hugging. And uh, I, I suppose sooner or later, a lot of men are going to get together and ban hugging because I, I hug all their wives. <laughs> and uh, it just breaks my heart. This poor soul. I heard you were a bit of a hugger. This poor soul from Guildford had, had, of course, a very, very bad childhood at school and learnt very, very little. And all she's got left is hugging. And uh, she thinks it's quite unnatural for him to ban her. And I think she's right. But don't worry about picking on the education department. It's society that decides what goes on. And I think that a real good hugging should be rallied together for everybody. Just remember, Hugging leads to all sorts of wonderful things. And we'll chat about those wonderful <laughs> things in the break. When we come back, we're going to talk about whether men are actually programmed to spread their seed, as we're <laughs> being told by the next letter writer. Don't go away. More of Sweetness Hour after the break. See you soon. Yay! Welcome back to Sweet and Sour. If you'd like to send us a letter, send it to the address that's about to appear on your screen right now. There it is, all coming up. Letters at sweetandsour.net.au and for every letter that lands here, we're going to send you to the movies courtesy of Natalie Cameron and NRC Communications. And the movie we're sending you to, there you go, is Bachelorette. Do we know anything about it? Silence from the panel, neither do <laughs> I. <laughs> Never mind. And if you'd like to give us a, a, a tick on Facebook, uh, what do you call it? Not a tick, a like on Facebook. There you go. Facebook.com <laughs> slash sweet and sour. You can tell I'm up with it. Here we go. Vincenzo, I still notice. My video machine. <laughs> <laughs> video. Do they still make videos? No. So much grief comes from trying to push a round peg into a square hole. Men cheat on their women because evolution has programmed it into them. They need to spread their seed by the force of nature. I love that quote. I'm going to use it from now on. No matter if they're in a stable relationship or not, if they're not straying, they are certainly craving it or at the very least thinking about it. I've been with my very, uh, in my very successful marriage for more than 17 years and it works so well because I don't batter an eye if hubby wants to think about having takeaway on some nights. He's honest and open and very loving and because of all of that, and here's the punchline, girls. He never bothers to stray anymore. 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 It Notice make that. Sense. Anymore. Of course it does. My it poor make son sense. is trapped in a relationship with such a horribly insecure girl. If he so much as glances at another, she makes his life miserable for weeks. Why don't women want to understand and appreciate the true nature of all men? Is it worth having this conversation with my son and telling him to find another more understanding woman? Or do. Too few females want to acknowledge how things really are. Why do you think it was so permissible for kings, and for that matter, queens of the world throughout history, to have so many infidelities? And it comes to us from Liana in Stirling, where else? South Australia. Thank you very much, Liana Vincenzo. <laughs> Any perspectives in this that uh, might be on the money? Well, I haven't, I haven't come across the round peg or a square hole for a long time, but uh, <laughs> this, Liana, you're so upset. What happened before these lovely 17 years? You seem to be trapped. I'm worried about you. He is no longer straying. So he did stray. And maybe all these other men are just straying, waiting to become non-strayers. I don't know what you're up to. You seem to have tarred everybody with the same brush, all because your future daughter-in-law, your daughter-in-law has upset you. Your poor son is trapped mm. in a relationship where he can't run around. I, I'm confused by what you want. You definitely can't get seed wherever you want it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm Mike. confused. <laughs> Mike, does your generation think it's natural for all blokes to run around and 
get yes. it wherever they can. And women. <laughs> get and women. And women. Ah, good girl, my. My, that was when you born too early. When you no, married. no, no. When you're young. Yeah, no, no, no. But when, when you're you mature. Married. Hang on. When, when you're, you're young. Were you ever like that? Well, well I wasn't we married when I was that young. <laughs> So the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. No. Come on, my sorry. We'll get, so, no. yeah. But if she's asking about her son, like, I'm pretty sure his girlfriend looks at other men as well. Exactly. Good on you. That's so true. This is more about the, the insecure girlfriend well, haranguing her son. I think it's a crazy well, I think, I think she looks at men as well as he looks at women. They're the same. Or, the same. Or, yeah, or maybe the son here has taken after the father and he's a philanderer. No, I reckon the opposite. What do you reckon, I reckon, here? well, they, you know, there's all this, this research and they talk about <coughs> why, people, uh, why people have affairs. And, and there's a whole lot of reasons. They're not getting intimacy, they want to feel powerful, whatever. Yep. But often they say the men that do stray, mm -hmm. and it's probably the same for women that do stray, if their partner doesn't kick up a fuss, mm -hmm that sort of empowers them to continue. And maybe what the, the, her husband is looking for is actually looking for a bit of intimacy and love from her. And so, so he doesn't, wouldn't need to stray. And maybe... Hubby doesn't stray anymore. No, well, yes, but it doesn't make sense because he also says that he works so well because I don't batter an eyelid if, if he wants to take, have takeaway, like Chinese takeaway at night. So if he did come in and say, hey, honey, I'm going out tonight, she wouldn't batter an eyelid. Well, that's what but she's saying. To. But she's, but yeah, but she's saying that. But I'm wondering whether the, the son is actually like the mum and the and the son's girlfriend is straying. Oh. But I actually think the mother should butt out because I think she's a pain in the ass and just because she <laughs> and her husband made a decision to live with infidelity doesn't mean that the son has to or wants to. You know what? Uh, it doesn't make a difference to me. We're a little more sophisticated than primal man, so irrespective of what our urges are, we've got this now. We hope mm. that's how we live together. Bobby, how do that's you see it? That's exactly how I see it. I think that this poor woman has probably enjoyed the shallowest of relationships mm. all her life. I mean, there's a little bit more to it than it, it, it. you know, it's a bit more to it than that, is quite it, frankly. How do you spell that? <laughs> <laughs> that is, and I, I think the other thing is that she's acting like a typical mother-in-law. Mm. There's never any... There's Not never, good enough. There's never any girl that's good enough uh, for your son, Not quite good frankly. Enough. And I don't think, uh, I think she's pretty uh, insecure herself, quite frankly. I don't think, I, the, uh, I don't think the girlfriend's insecure. And as I say, I think she's got a very shallow relationship. Yeah. Yep, and yep. I wonder whether she stayed in the marriage because she didn't want to lose the status of being married or didn't want to lose all the creature comforts of being married. Because if she, you Lots know, it's of people just, do. It's, I mean, you'd have to worry about a relationship anyway when, her first, uh, when the first sentence talks about square pegs in round holes. I mean, uh, she's got a great relationship with her husband, obviously. When we or come is that back, a pun? When we, it's, a pun, <laughs> it's a pun. When we come back, we're talking about teachers who bully kids. Because mm. it doesn't just happen with kids bullying kids. When we come back, <laughs> don't go away. More of Sweet Sour coming up. Yay. <laughs> Close but no cigar. Welcome back to Sweet and Sour. Hello, Sweet and Sour guests. My 17-year-old boy came home from school. Quite distraught and very unsettled during this time where he needs to concentrate on study for his final exams. He was almost in tears when he related how the physical education senior master, who like all the senior masters in the school, had to sign off on his completion of his final year course, took the opportunity to berate and verbally abuse my boy for being a poor physical specimen, a waste of all his teaching time, a pathetic human being and someone who he could never stand and hated the sight of. All this in front of around 15 of his fellow final year students. Needless to say, apparently all the students left uh, felt uncomfortable and when the phys ed wanker left, the other kids all comforted my son and offered support after such a horrible and vindictive attack. My question is, how to handle it from here because I have no idea. I could make a formal complaint against the senior master, but uh, how would that help my son? Uh, I'm sure my son doesn't want an apology from him because he just never wants to see him again. So what do I do here, please, that would help my son overcome, overcome this emotionally? Traumatic event, Diana of Doncaster in Victoria. Susie, straight to you. Well, as um, a mother of three sons and a daughter, um, I, I would just, just to say there is instances in their schooling where some teachers, and often they're not part of the education department, that actually come in and, and do the wrong thing. They've still got a mentality of old school, 
old school teaching and abuse, which is part of abuse. Um, I really think it's important, even if your son doesn't want to, that he actually confronts the teacher or at least writes a letter and, 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 and asks for an apology. And I would actually personally, even though he's leaving the school, I think he needs to go to the principal. You need, you need to go to the principal and say, this is unacceptable, this is what happened. Mm. It's totally unacceptable and the school needs to give your son an apology. It's not going to do everything, but it will show that he, if he has any <clears throat> residual doubts about himself, that at least It'll will teach vindicate himself. By and also, it the, anyway. yes, but I think that it's disgusting, and I honestly, th it does happen, and I'm sure it happens more than I see it. Mm. Um, but uh, it's it's a horrible thing. Bobby, the guy's a goose. The guy's a goose. I mean, I went through this. I was in an all-boys school, and went through this sort of thing because I was a big kid. I could never get over the vaulting horse. Never get over it. And, uh, but at the end of the day, this guy's a goose, shouldn't be in a school, shouldn't be yeah. teaching. And it's not about, it's not just about your son either, it's about yeah. all the other kids yeah, that are exactly. in the school. Yeah. And you need to go and front the headmaster and get the front master to front, get the headmaster to front this idiot and just get him sorted out, quite frankly. Yeah, yeah Simple as that. Vincenzo? <clears throat> Bob, you, you won't get over that horse even today, mate. Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly wouldn't win a Melbourne Cup, mate. <laughs> Diana, you've got a job to do. Your darling son, who you love so much, has to understand how many boys he can protect in the future. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. He needs to stand up for himself, march straight into that headmaster, he might need a letter from you. He might need your support on the day. I don't care how you do it. You get that boy to stand up for himself. Today, we want our children to stand up for themselves. Perfect example, you couldn't get a greater stage than a school to teach kids mm. how to go about it correctly. Don't go and slash the tyres on his car. Don't break his windscreen. Don't go firebomb his letterbox. Or don't cut them himself. Do it <laughs> properly by going in, reporting him, and making sure that if no action is taken, that he calls in the local newspapers, calls in the local politicians, and does it properly. This is a lesson that he's going to learn for the rest of his life. He'll probably become the best lawyer this country's ever seen. <laughs> Now's really your chance. So. My. Do you concur? Uh, I agree that the teacher is a total... Loser. Loser. But your son is 17 and he needs to man up and he just needs to do something about it. He just seems like a bit of a sissy to me and like... What is he's wrong with him? Exams, Time to learn. Though. He's doing his year 12 exams. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. He's going to learn a hell of a lot by fronting up to this Yeah, situation. in the future he's going to have a lot more to get through. He's got to be a man about it. He's 17. Well, he hasn't said that he doesn't want to do it. She's assuming that he doesn't want to That's do true. it. That's true. Do we so. like this letter to give away the pair of limited yes, edition sunnies? Oh, number one for this letter. Yeah. Number yes, one? Definitely. No, no, Bobby, you can carry yeah, as well. Absolutely. Ma, you're happy to give Sensitive. this one as well? I guess so. She's screwing up her nose. She and guesses. if Bobby jumps over the horse, I will buy him a pair of glasses. <laughs> Coming out to Diana of Doncaster in Victoria, a pair of limited edition sunnies, courtesy of Alon Treves and Aussie Opticals. We've got to disappear. That was a good show tonight. Vincenzo, Prince of Flesh, terrific to have you in, mate. Grazie tanto. Merry Christmas, it's around oh, the corner. Oh, it's coming up as well. It is. If you want to go to www.mondo.net.au, the greatest Christmas menu you've ever seen in your life. We send it all over Australia. Ring us. Ring us. What was the <laughs> website address again? www.mondo.net.au. Fantastic. My Christmas carols coming I up for you. I hate Christmas. <laughs> okay, good night, love. Great, great to have you. <laughs> Susie, you're going to Rudder for Christmas? No, I'm on the French Alps. Oh, and the French Alps for Christmas. What are the Christmas. poor people doing? In fact, I want to They're have some... They're going to rot nest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's lovely. Terrific. Have a wonderful time in the Thank French Alps. You, when do you leave? We're leaving on the 10th and doing London, Paris. Oh, when do you go to rot nest, Bobby? A uh, week after Christmas. Fantastic. Four oh, days, but... four days, then back into campaigning for the election. Oh, of course. Good luck with that. Too, Thanks, mate. mate. All Thanks. right. Keep us Thanks, updated, mate. too. We'll It'll be back fun. To keep us updated. It'll be fun. Thank all of our wonderful panellists. Thank our terrific crew. And thanks for having us at home tonight, Australia. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>